Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to spend a few more words on the KZ ZSNs, the originals, these guys. This is sort of part two of uh, revisiting these guys. Um, a couple weeks ago, someone asked a question on Reddit whether I had used the KZ ZSN auto EQ settings. And uh, I had not, so I went and researched it. And um, auto EQ is essentially, you know what EQ is. So normal equalizer, auto EQ is actually just specific settings that they try to compensate for the error that was measured from the actual headphones to their target curve. And they try to compensate for all the error by doing an inverse curve. Um, so it sounded cool. It sort of, so it, it actually looks like this. So they have all these, this great graph that says, well, we have this target, and for the, the ZSN, I'm not entirely sure what target this one is. It's not the Harman target. They sort of say that, but there's this other target that they use and say, well, we want our frequency response to match this blue guy. When we measured it, which is called the raw, so the, so the black line was actually measurements from an actual pair of ZSNs. And then they say, well, this black is actually above our target, so we need to compensate with an inverse, and that's kind of what this this green guy is right here. So the green guy should inverse all the error, and the error, and they measure the error. They actually see the error in red. So target curve in blue measured black, um, and then the red is sort of the one they're trying to compensate for all the error between the black and the blue. So, I mean, kind of right off the bat, so the ZSN, you know, everyone says it's kind of boomy bass. It's got a lot of bass, so it's not, not that much of a surprise that the target has a, a kind of a lower bass response than the actual measured. And that's kind of, looks like it's higher up until, you know, not quite in the mid, but getting there. So at some point, um... You can almost call this min recess mids, but at some point they're saying that this range right here falls below the target, so we're going to have to compensate, bring it back up with some gain, and then we're back up a little too high, so now we're going to compensate down with a curve that looks like that. So what you end up with, auto EQ kind of pumps out this chart, which looks like this, and it says, well, so for 120 hertz, you need a you know, minus... 3.4 decibel gain, and then you basically go down the list. This sort of represents, this is parametric EQ, but if you remember, like your normal EQ, it had sliding bars. These are the, instead of doing the fixed, parametric actually lets you do specific frequencies. So what that looks like for me on, on Android, I use USB Audio Player Pro, and it actually has a a tone boosters parametric EQ. So you can see kind of what I did was here's 120 hertz and then a minus 3.4 decibels. So 120, 3.4, and well, didn't want to do that, but um, so this guy is actually number one and you can almost see it. It's kind of right there, but you can't really see it on, on video. So you go down this chart, type in all these specific frequencies, specific gains, and the quality is this this middle column. And you end up with this curve in tone boosters, which you know represents this curve, this green curve, the way it starts out low right there, and then it pops back up, and then it pops back down here, and then it pops back up and levels off. So this green curve, um, Pretty much looks the same inside of your EQ there. So the real question is, does it does it help? Um, is it better or worse? I'm not gonna. It's kind of hard to say if it's better or worse if you're not used to this specific target. Um, I think the ZSNs sound pretty good on their own. Um, immediately when you turn on this EQ, what you, what I noticed is that a lot of the background not it's not so much a hiss but just background noise 
and that goes away. It's it's really wild. It's almost like listening to an old cassette player, and you you go buy a cassette at the store, you pop it in, hit play, and it sounds awesome. And then you turn on Dolby Noise Reduction, and then suddenly you know you just hear silence because it got rid of all the background noise that was there, and it compresses the frequencies a little bit. So now your brain sort of compensates and zooms in on the frequencies and makes it sound right again. And that's, that's kind of exactly what happens here, is you, you click on the CQ, and immediately you're like, oh, now my music sounds a little lower and kind of further away. Um, it's not as present as it was before, but immediately you notice that there's no, there's no more noise. And you don't even think that the ZSN has any background noise when you're playing just normal music, but you know, flip on this and you're like, oh, that's actually what silence sounds like. Um, so that was cool. Uh, I'm not, it's kind of hard to say whether that's good or bad. Um, to me, it sounds a little flat. Like it takes a lot of, a lot of the fun away from the ZSNs. And if you listen to it like dance or pop music, I think the ZSNs are pretty fun to listen to. And this sort of flattens it out. So for me, and I actually have a pair of Sony MH755 for the same reason was it's, it's kind of nice to hear what a reference curve, target curve sounds like. The Sony's so reproduce the Harman curve. These are a different target. And it's kind of interesting what, what people find pleasing versus an actual hard technical target that says, oh, now it's actually reproducing the right frequencies but does that necessarily sound better to everyone? Probably not. It, technically, it's reproducing a target. That I understand. Is it as pleasing to me as listening to it without? I'm not, not too sure about that. I mean, mainly because it, the vocals tend to get recessed a little more than I preferred. Um, so you listen to ZSN and like a strong female vocal, you know, very intimate right there on a the microphone in your head. And then you turn on this EQ, and it, it almost seems like it pushes, it pushed her back a little bit, probably more than I would have wanted. And again, they sort of say, well, this is our target, but in general, auto EQ is, is sort of a system for you to setting up your own personal targets. So I think that's probably where it's more useful, is this, this particular one wasn't 100% pleasing to me. Um, it definitely did some things right, um, and it's super interesting if you just want to hear what other people are hearing or what other people find their targets in their heads like oh, i really want a flat sounding headphone something that reproduces the sound as intended by the musician you know no added gains or losses here or there across the frequency range then yeah that's kind of interesting um but I don't know, I wasn't 100% uh, in with these particular settings for the music that I listen to, but um, if you have a pair of ZSNs and you have, um, you know, UAPP um, with the Tone, boost, tone Boosters EQ or that's the parametric version, they also have, this is the standard, the standard uh, parametric, not standard equalizer, I don't I think I don't actually have that as a plug. I think I should pay for that one here too as well. So, But if you have a phone that has a standard equalizer uh, with these standard frequency ranges, then uh, pop those in. But um, yeah, I mean, it's worth spending a couple hours to give it a try, see how it works, see if that's more pleasing to you. Um, definitely if you prefer a flatter uh, dynamic music, then probably for you. Uh, for me, it wasn't so much, but... Um, if you have a pair of ZSNs and um, auto EQ doesn't work with tons of KZs and ZSN was kind of one of the more latest, more modern ones that it worked with. So I thought I was like, oh, that's super cool that it, that particular model worked with their results. So um, you should feel privileged that you have a ZSN and that someone went through the time to record the frequencies and compute all the errors and the, the results. So um, give that a try. It's worth an afternoon playing with it, going through some of your favorite albums to see if it sounds better or worse or you like it or not. So that's it. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.